Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Tuesday. Tuesday, right? There we go. And all today's guests, including Ian Furness, standing by. Brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort. The Bayside Restaurant and Lounge is taking part in the 2024 Dine About, serving up a delicious three-course menu for the annual Vancouver Island Food Festival. The menu will be featured from January 17th until February 4th and will feature a variety of seafood appetizers, locally sourced entrees, and house-made desserts. Oh, Check it out while you enjoy 25% off their best rate when booked through the hotel now until February 29th. Call 250-248-8333 to book today. Uh, Seahawks season is over with. Huskies lose uh, last night 34-13 to Michigan. Hmm. Here to talk about all of that and more from KGR Sports Radio in Seattle. Fox 13 Sports, Ian Furness. Ian you, did you just get in from uh, the Seahawks game in Arizona like an hour ago? What? It how are you, by the way? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Rick, I'm worried about how you are. I heard that big groan a moment ago, and uh, that's a lot uncomfortable for everybody. So. I was just getting excited about you, uh, Ian. Well, well, just hey, getting well, excited. Okay. Even more uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just got more uncomfortable. I know we're yeah. right and everything, but uh, <laughs> no, we, we – uh, I got in last night. Uh, we had a we just had you know the trip from you know where the last couple of days for the last we we've yeah. got an issue down here. Alaska Airlines has grounded like 180 planes, and so is United. And so, um, yeah, so it's it travel in the states right now. Sounds like Brian pointed this out to me. Sounds like a normal day for Air Canada. So yeah, here we are. <laughs> 34 13. Though I'll ignore that. 34 yeah. 13. Wolverines <laughs> over the Huskies. Uh, your takeaway, I don't know how much you saw of it, given all the travel, but your takeaway, I, I know you're a Washington State Cougar fan, <laughs> yes, but your takeaway yes. from what you saw last night, pretty impressive win by Michigan. Yeah, it was. Uh, I saw the first quarter from the Medford Airport, and you're asking, where's Medford? So was I. Uh, that's how I got from Phoenix to Medford, Medford to Seattle. I watched the first quarter, then jumped on a plane and saw the fourth quarter, and then you know the highlights and kept an eye on it. So, you know, I mean, Michigan – Basically, they did what they've done to teams all year. They bullied Washington. They beat them up at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. They ran for 300 yards uh, on the defensive side. It was the best defense in the country, and and they looked every bit the part. You know, I think sometimes we were making the comparison. Some people made the comparison before the game, and I think it was appropriate that it was a lot like uh, the Super Bowl in New York, in which you know the Denver had this record-breaking offense, unstoppable, and Seattle had the best defense that, that we had seen in a long time, and, and the defense won. And that's kind of what happened last night. The defense won. They beat up Penix. He didn't handle the pressure very well, and uh, I'm not sure if it mattered because you know when you run for 300 yards in a football game, it's hard to, hard to beat that team. How will Michael uh, Penix Jr., runner-up on the Heisman voting, do at the pro yeah. level, Ian? Well, I, I think that's the biggest question, Donnie, because – you know, I think there's some. I think there's some legitimate questions about him. And I've been a Penix fan, even though I'm a Coug. I, I'm a Penix fan. I think he just throws an incredible ball. He's really accurate. Uh, he's a beautiful thrower of the football. But I mean, I don't think you can get past the fact that you know people bring up the injuries that he had earlier in his career, season-ending injuries, knees, shoulder, etc. You know, question is durability. Well, he has been durable in the sense he hasn't missed games at Washington for two years. But boy, he he gets knocked around just a little bit. And, you know, we're grabbing the ribs and this hurts and mm. all these things hurt and all that kind of stuff and all that dramatics that doesn't help that the perception of the NFL is, man, suck it up. And like we I, I spent a lot of time, you know, the last couple of years with you guys. And, you know, we kind of we joke around about Russell Wilson and, you know, and, and have our fun with him. And and, you know, Gino is Gino. I could just tell you this NFL quarterbacks don't go around if you get banged around the pocket a few times, grabbing, limping, and, and you know, the, the dramatics that you saw. I, I just, mm -hmm. I'm not, I think that'll be, I think that'll, that'll be a red flag for NFL teams. I mean, they won't draft him in the first round. I don't know. He, he's going to go to the senior bowl. It's going to be huge for him uh, to go to the senior bowl, take snaps under center, play in a more pro style offense, see what he can do. He can throw the football. There's no doubt about that. But I think the bigger concerns about his durability and how he handles, Pocket pressure and pressure in his face. Uh, I, I think those were a little bit on display last night. All right, let's talk about the Seahawks, uh, Ian. First, can I ask you about uh, the dressing room, the young guys in the, yeah. in the dressing room yeah. post game? No, I think you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cigars. smoke and cigars, and the the music was blaring. The vets didn't like it. Your thoughts 
on that after not making the playoffs uh, Sunday in Arizona? Well, I'll tell you, Rick, it was a strange scene. It really was. And, you know, the three of us have covered a lot of locker rooms, and every locker room dynamic in every different sport is is unique. And, you know, that one, though, on, on Sunday was one that caught all of us off guard. And, yeah. you know, you'll hear, like, oh, it's the old media, you know, old white guy <laughs> media dudes, and they don't know what's going on. They don't understand. <laughs> but I, I just – Walking into a locker room for a team that, yes, they won a game by a point. They finished nine and eight. They only won because the kicker missed two field goals in the fourth quarter for the other team. They, they kind of were outplayed for the most part. And that was the story all year. But you didn't make the postseason. You know, the goal every year for Pete Carroll is to win the division first, make the playoffs second, and then see what happens from there. They didn't accomplish either one of those goals. And yet there was this celebration. And a handful of guys, mostly the young defensive backs, the secondary, were smoking cigars. Now, there were some defensive linemen doing it as well. I saw Jaron Reed and Daryl Taylor must have had three or four of them. I mean, but that might speak to Daryl Taylor all year. Uh, he had a massively disappointing season. He was a non-factor all year. And I think he would be kind of the poster child for this is just right, not right. Hmm. Now, you know, Julian Love and Nish – see, here's the thing. This is the best part about the world we live in. Initially, the thing was, hey, we're just celebrating a long season. We made it through, and you know, guys are healthy. That was, that was basically what they said initially. Well, first of all, not everybody made it through healthy. <laughs> okay, like that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, Shenna Nuosu missed most of the season. He was hurt. Jordan Brooks banged his, you know, was banged around. He was hurt. I can tell you this, Jordan Brooks wasn't smoking a cigar. So then the spin came out when there was criticism coming from some former Seahawks, John Ryan included, and some other people. The spin came out, oh, no, we were celebrating Julian Love's baby being born. Well, that was three weeks ago. you know. And so that part was odd, too. It, was just, it just wasn't a good look. It just didn't, there's no way you can really spin it to make it a good look. There are, I would just say it's 80-20 fan base down here saying that was just awful, the 20% saying you guys are old and don't get it. But I think it also speaks volumes about who this team was this season. Yeah. Uh, they, just, they just underperformed. There was too much youth. Bobby Wagner didn't like it. I know Jordan Brooks I don't think liked it. Certainly Quandre Diggs didn't like it. There were a number of other veterans <laughs> in the locker room that didn't like it. Uh, they've got some work to do to kind of do things. I can just, I can just say this. As someone who covered uh, every, every Seahawk team since 2010, but specifically the one with the Legion of Boom and Sherm and Cam and Earl, Michael uh, Bennett, Averill, uh, Brandon Meebane and those dudes, KJ Wright. I know he didn't like it. I can tell you that right now. Uh, and, and all those guys, that would never have happened in the past. That's not something. Not making hmm. the playoffs, a baby celebration, uh, that just would never have happened with that group, period, end of story. Maybe things have changed. Maybe we're all old. Maybe this is the way of the, of the new world, but it never would have happened in the past. All right, so no playoffs two of the last three years uh, for the Seahawks. W what's got to happen this offseason in your eyes? Big sh uh, big changes or tinkering? Yeah. Uh, w what do they got to do? Uh, you know, Rick, I, I think you know the first question I think has been answered is unless something dramatic happens, and I can't see that with Jody Allen and Burt Cold, who kind of run the organization with the Paul Allen Trust now. Uh, the first question is, you know, is Pete Carroll going to come back? And he has said, yeah, he's, he plans on coming back. I, I think there's going to be changes on the coaching staff for sure. Um, I think that you could make an argument that Clint Hurt, uh, the defensive coordinator, is probably on a little bit of a hot seat right now as well. And, and, you know, we go back to what was going on in the locker room. Maybe there's just kind of a lack of respect and there's just not a, you know, maybe there needs to be more of an iron fist coming down. You know, it's never been Pete's way, but, but you know, the lieutenants probably have to go down that road a little bit. So you've got that going on. Uh, I think, you know, personnel-wise, they've got 19 free agents. So, you know, Ooh. that's a that's a decent amount. Three-fifths of your offensive line, both guards and your starting center are free agents. Jordan Brooks is a free agent. Bobby Wagner is a free agent. Jaron Reed's a free agent. So you've got some decisions to make there, plus guys that aren't free agents. Uh, Jamal Adams, what do you do with his contract? Do you bring back Geno Smith with his big cap salary cap number? You probably do. Uh, the draft comes up in four months. Like this is, but, but I always kind of tell people, this is normal for an NFL season. You have all those questions every year. But to take your question, Rick, and, and you know, what do they need to do to get better? They got to figure out a way to stop the run, man. Oh, like, like yeah. they just got bludgeoned. They rebuilt their defensive line this year to no avail. They were probably worse against the run than they were a year ago. So, you know, what do you do there? Nuosu being out hurt them, but one player can't make that kind of a difference. Uh, losing Brooks for a couple games hurt them as well, and he was playing on one leg. Uh, I think you re-sign him for sure. Wagner's a different decision. It's a tough decision, but. That's what the NFL offseason is all about, is making those tough decisions. But they've got some work to do offensively. 
I think they're going to be okay. Uh, but but defensively, they've got a lot of work to do. All right. Uh, in our last hit with you uh, for a while, so I'll put you on the spot with the cliche uh, talk radio, talk television uh, question. You see a lot of the 49ers. They're a contender. Who's, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Well, they got beat by Baltimore, and and that surprised me because they not just got beat. They got kind of beat up by Baltimore, mm. and that, that shocked me a little bit. I don't think that happens again. I, I'd stay – you know – I, I think if I was, you know, if you're a wagering man, you guys can do that north of the border up there, I believe. So yes, oh yeah. Uh, I think Baltimore and San Francisco. I would take those two uh, over the field to be. And I think we'll see a rematch rematch of those two teams. I, I think San Francisco is really good. They're mm-hmm. real, and if they're healthy, the bye week is massive for them, guys. It's huge. The guys, some guys are dinged up and banged up. I just, I. Brock Purdy would be a little bit of a question mark, but they can run the football. They've got so many offensive weapons. You know, Bosa having a week off is going to help their defense and Armstead and all those guys. They got the best two best linebackers. They got best linebacker tandem in the league, I think, in Greenlaw and Warner, and their secondary is good enough. Uh, I think it's Baltimore and San Francisco, and in a rematch, I'll take Kyle Shanahan and San Francisco. Listen, two Harbaugh's can't win championships in one yeah. year. There's something. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's got to be a rule or a policy about that down here in the state somewhere, right? There, there has to be along the way. Uh, Ian, thanks for this, and thanks for everything all, all football season long. And as yeah. a result, we're going to send you uh, two tickets anywhere in Air Canada's world. <laughs> I go to the Bayside. I want to go to the Bayside. Yeah, That's where sure. I want to go. I want right. to go to the Bayside. Hey, in all seriousness, we have fun with this every week, guys, and we do. And I just I want to thank you, too. I love the show. I, do, I joke about it, but I do mm-hmm. listen to the podcast on the way home often. Uh, I really enjoy the work you guys do. I think you know Vancouver and, and, and British Columbia lucky to have you, especially a Hall of Famer. Donnie, huh? congrats. But no, honestly, the two of you guys do a terrific job. Ryan's fantastic. And also all of your viewers slash listeners that I hear from on a weekly basis. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun, so, but they are passionate. And, and all, for all the folks in Vancouver that listen and watch, thank you guys. I appreciate your feedback. Uh, I'll, I'll, anytime you need me, I'd love to come back. I love doing this with you guys and, and keep up the good work. You have no idea how many compliments we get about your uh, yeah, weekly visits, although I have to say, <laughs> kind of a sad life that you're listening to our podcast on the way home from work. <laughs> you can it's do either that or, it's, it's either that or, or country music, and I just it's usually a oh, 50-50 okay. thing, you know, and it's it, it was a lot better when the Canucks were awful, and I could listen to that, and, and just, you yeah. know, it's it's like I listened to the Husky football postgame show last night because the misery was, was highly entertaining. <laughs> now, that, now that you guys are rolling, it's not as much fun to listen to the Canucks talk because it's all, you know, Pollyanna. It's all great. But, no, I do I do listen to you guys. You do a great job, and, and hopefully uh, all your viewers and listeners understand how lucky they are to have you guys uh, still on the air and have Chuck uh, supporting you guys, so it's awesome. That Canuck season isn't over, by the way, Ian. So uh, you might be entertained in the yep. next few weeks. Yep. Who knows? Whatever breaks, whatever breaks news-wise in in Seattle, we'll get you back on soon. But thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Take care.